So I'm here to introduce our, our speaker, um, session facilitator. He is a multi-nominated producer, composer, and award-winning 2007 New Artist of the Year, Robert Chambers. Um, recognized as one of the premier gospel pianists internationally, Robert attributes his musical success and gifts to the Almighty God. Without any formal training, he has been playing piano since the age of three and publicly since the age of seven. He has accompanied numerous award-winning artists such as uh, Dallin Collins, Kirk Frank uh, Franklin and the Family, Carvin Wynes, Diane Clemens, Liberty Silver, Londa Larman, Toronto Mass Choir, uh, Patricia Shirley, Eileen Lombardu, uh, Paula Sanchez, and more. He's also a creator and founder of the Revolutionary Any Key uh, Music System, a program that teaches individuals how to master the art of playing piano by ear. When he's not teaching, speaking, traveling, recording, or performing, you can find Robert serving as an official band leader at Lima Mixers, one of the fastest growing and influential ministry based in Toronto. That's what Alright, so it's great to have you all. Now, I, I like to get all the names, but because it's a little bit more full, I'll just stay with uh, some of you guys, and then when we get uh, a little bit later, if we have some questions, I'll get some of your names and so forth. Alright, so this session is the intermediate advance, so I'm not going to be playing around in this one, and we're just going to shoot all the way to the moon. Alright, all the way to the heavens. Now, the reason why I started with this song, because obviously we can be all that we can be through God, and this song, I just like how this guy plays this song. powerful is those are what I call accessories and different things like that so what I would do growing up is I would hear some of the things because how I learned was just by with a lot of people that play by ear we just listened to something and we started to play so I would just use my ear to play it and then after I figured out by ear then I would say why does this thing work right because the most important thing in music is you have to understand Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom, but then all you're getting, get understanding. So I would always ask myself, why does that work? Why would you add? Why does that work? Why does that work? Why does that work? Why does that work? And then I saw, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just this, it's this, and certain things happen again. So for example, if, we were, if I was playing... Let's say if I was ending it, right? I'm just giving a basic. I would do this. I would do that in songs. I would just take stuff and steal it. So I didn't say I didn't invent my playing or other play. I would just listen to other people, which a lot of people do, and we mimic. The Bible says there's, there's nothing new under the sun. Guaranteed, there's, now we have the internet, we can see different things, people posting things online, but 
there was probably someone that you haven't even heard of doing some crazy stuff. But because we're just not even over there. We're not in that other country to see the crazy stuff that they're doing. Right? So, all that to say that music is very simple once we understand the language. Okay? So one thing I'm going to assume is that everybody in this room knows how to play their major scales. Right? Say amen. 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 And if you don't, that's okay. I'll have a beginner session after this. Okay? All right? Everybody knows how to play their major chords. Say amen. amen. Everybody knows how to play their minor chords. Amen. amen. Everybody knows how to play a diminished chord. Amen. amen. Okay? Okay. We, we got to know those things. All right? So, just a quick refresher. Okay? I'm not going to get everybody's name. As I said, okay? AJ, Francine, Ramona, David, Ernest, and Jude. Okay, that's the only ones I have for now. Okay, because we're getting right into the meat of everything. But before I go into the meat of what I'm doing, what are some of the biggest, let's say, questions that you have concerning music? Or let's say things that kind of stump you or so. Or maybe it's something you play, you don't understand why it works. Just name a few things. I have direction where I'm going, but I'm, if I can address something at the same time. Modulation, I guess. Modulation. Maybe arrangements, how to arrange, how to use particular chords. Okay, yeah. Can we say that? Yeah. Yes. Maybe arranging. Uh, progressions, like in terms of what goes to what. Progressions, in terms of what goes to what, all right? So type of arrangement. Anything else? So modulations, and um, so modulations, you're talking about it. Say for instance, playing the key of C, and then how to change the next key? Not to not the key change. Okay. They'll modulate in a different key, but they'll keep St still in C. Still in C. Exactly, and that's how music goes. What I found out that music is very simple, right? A major scale has how many different notes? Seven. It has seven different notes. Say the numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are only, and what I realized a long time ago, I so those of you know on this keyboard it has it. On this keyboard, it has it. If I was a president, I'd ban it. It's called a transpose button. Okay? If it was up to me, that inch, that button, everybody that made that button would be cast into the prison. I'm joking. <laughs> it's the worst button that holds you back. At the age of four, when I started playing a little bit, I played the first time in church, I saw that button. I'm like, wait a minute. I can play everything in the key of C, and it sounds like all 12 keys? I was killing that. Then I saw something happen. I saw my progression in terms of how I was getting better as a youngster started to get less. I didn't progress as much. So I'm like, this is holding me back. I don't know how I knew it. I just knew I wasn't supposed to use it anymore. So at age seven, I stopped transposing. So at age seven, I would take a song and I would play it every key. Whatever level that I was at at the time. You know, I didn't know all the chords that I know now. All right? But every, the level that I was at right now, um, I would actually do that in every key. Once I did that, that's when my eyes were open and I saw the piano. So that's why I say it holds you back because it doesn't allow you to see the revelation that God wants you to teach, wants, wants you to see in the music. Okay? Does it make sense? Well, it's going to make sense as we go along, okay? So it is just this. So you talked about modulations in different keys or in a song. Songs don't have anything more than a one to seven. That's why I say you have to be able to play in every key because then you can notice like, wait a minute, it just switched and went to a different key even though we're still in the same key. So for example, um, geez, I should have, huh? Power belongs to God. Uh, um, but that, that stays in the same key, so you mean? No, it's no, no, no. Okay, okay, so right, there's a reason why that works on that, okay? But that, that wouldn't necessarily, okay, it's, in mold wise that would be a modulation, right? But another modulation would be, okay, I'm kind of old school. So, um, you guys know this one? All right, so, so remember that the bridge part, when he goes, One to seven in one key, and then a one to seven in another key. 
Okay, so I'm going to explain that in terms of, I want to cover a little bit of that modulation on what just happened. All right, but before we do that, we need to understand what chords happen on these numbers. Okay, what chord happens on the one? Major. Major. What chord happens on the two? Minor. Minor. What chord happens on the three? Minor. What chord happens on the four? Major. What chord happens on the five? Major. What chord happens on the six? Minor. What chord happens on the seven? Diminish. Diminish, or I like to call it a minor flat five. Okay? How did you guys get these answers, by the way? Pardon? Study by ear, you figured out this is the pattern, songs have this whole pattern. How did we get these answers? How do you know it? Do you need more chairs back there? No. Huh? No? Because we got three over here. Okay. How do we get these? Come on, come on. We only have a little bit of time. You gotta pull out so much out of me. I wanna give you so much. How do we get these? Major, how do we know? You're correct. Yeah. How do you know it's the answer? By, Did, by ear. By ear, right? That's how I learned too. I was like, man, I just know it. You know, there's a guy named Sam Williams back there. He just knows his stuff. He can't explain it, but this guy's one of the baddest players out there. Look at the right Sam Williams, guys. He produced Dave Brown, you know, and all these, all these great artists, right? He, he can't tell you what he's doing, but he just does I'm like, Sam, don't you know what you're doing? It's like, yeah. He knows, but to explain it, he can't, right? So, but I was blessed with a gift to kind of explain it. So we know it by ear, okay? This is how. This is how we know. Day two. What was created in day two in creation? You know what Mark, Mark is in? Okay, that's okay. Let me tell you. Day two, heaven was created, right? He says in the firmament, the space, the firmament in between the waters, right? If I read the book of Genesis, you're going to, let's read in the book of Genesis. So you can take my word. You can take my word for it. It says this, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided, and firmament means space, okay? Firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. The number two is symbolic because it represents the number of agreement. Number two represents the number of? Agreement, when you make a deal with someone between two, right? Jesus said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. heaven. That's the process of agreement, all right? The reason why these chords are this way is because God wants to show you a different truth, which is the process of agreement. Follow me, all right? So if we're in the key of C because C is the easiest key to C, <laughs> pun intended, okay? If we had C and we went two notes up in that major scale, what letter would we get? That's the number of agreement. Number one, two notes up, agreement. Two more notes up, we get? G. G. What chord is that? C major. That's it. Nothing any harder than that. Okay? We use the same process for the other thing, for the two. What's the two in the key of C? D. D. Process of agreement. Two notes up in that major scale. What do you get? F. Two more notes up after that. A. Minor. That's it. Nothing deeper than that. That's how God made it. Process of agreement. Right, so you can just take it in music. Does it make sense? Everybody follow? So you have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and this one. What do you get for this? What's the seven in the key of C? B. B. Two notes up in the major scale. D. Two more notes up. F. And what chord is that? C B D F. B diminished. Right. If you have to touch this panel, right? You can see that here. It's a diminished chord. Okay. So. This is what I figured a long time, which a lot of you may have done that as well, that whenever I hear a major chord, what number do I associate a major chord with? Just one, four, and five. That's it. When you hear a minor chord, what do you associate it with? Two, six, and three. Okay? And now for the um, seven, when I hear a diminished chord, what do I associate it with? Seven. It's set apart. It's holy. What did God do in day seven? He rested, he set it apart, holy. All right, so there's something about this diminished chord. I'm gonna show you when you understand those truths. It's the same way of how we play, all right? So those are why the chords are the way they are, because of the process of agreement, okay? So now that we know that, we can take certain truths out of this in terms of using it. So let's say we wanna use a diminished chord. Now we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into actually arranging before I jump into module. Oh, actually, let's do the modulation. Remember I said, um, so I'm in the key of C, but then I went here, and I played up. So I'm in the key of C, right? 
but at that part, all right, I went to and he said, right, and I played this chord. Whoops, oh, sorry, hold on. There we go. I'm trying to do the backwards. And I played this chord. What's the name of this chord? AJ, you're in the front. It's F minor. That's an F minor. So what I went to, what, or what I didn't do, I didn't write this song. Sorry, I'm not taking credit for that. He went to an F minor. I guess we could do F minor seven after all that kind of stuff. He went to an F minor. So I went, he went, then he went here, what's that? B flat what? Major. B flat major. So he went to, uh, and he went to the B flat, sorry I can't spell, B flat, he went to a B flat major, even though it sounds in key of C. So when I see a minor chord, what numbers is really a minor? Two, three, or six, that's it, right? So therefore, this can either be a 2, a 3, or a 6, right? So that's why it's important to know how to play the different keys, right? So this now followed, it's a minor, okay? Now followed by the B flat as a major. I was just like, okay, which sequence has a minor followed by a major, but actually has these notes in it? So what I mean? So let's say this was the 6. What key would F minor be the six in? We're in the intermediate advance. I'm keeping it up here. Okay, so I hope you guys follow me. In the key, in what is F minor? Which key is F minor the sixth note in? A flat. A flat. Okay. So if this is in key of A flat, then what number is this? B flat. It would be the two. two. Okay. Am I losing anybody? Okay. Just follow. Good. Good. Perfect. Okay. All right. It's the two. What type of chord is on the two? But there's no there's no two here. I mean, it's not minor. So let's try again. So let's say if this was a, a three. And what key would this be the third? D. Hmm? E flat. The third, you said? It'd be the third in which key? D flat. D flat. Another name for D flat is also C sharp. So we know those two notes, right? All right. So in the key of um, C sharp or D flat, is there a B flat? Yeah. Yes, there is, right? Is what, what, what number is it in the key of uh, C sharp or D flat? Six. It's a six note, right? Okay, so then what would B flat mean? Would it be major on the six? No, it's usually minor, right? So let's try something else. So let's say if it's the two, what key would it be the second in? E flat, okay. So if it's second in E flat, is there a B flat in the key of E flat? And what number is B flat? And what type of chord is it? Right, so we actually come to the conclusion, this is just in the key of E flat. So when they go, I can choose from is just all the notes from the E flat major scale. So you just have to notice that. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Alright? So F is so I sounds like I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm just doing they have an exercise where you just go like this. basic scale, the same exercise, but I know how to use it because I've identified what key I'm in. So I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking harder than one to seven. I just know when to switch the keys. That's what they call modes. Modes is something you switch on. If someone were to shut off the light, it becomes dark. If it was really dark, we couldn't see anything. What a mode does is you switch it on and it illuminates what you can and what you cannot play. <laughs> so usually I can tell what someone understands modes, right? Because I'm like, you can't play that here. Well, you're using it. You can't play that there, right? Because as I said, so I can make up chords well, as long as I stay in there. And then I go back to the D minor there, which brings us back to the C. All right, so you just got to recognize, I guarantee if we pull up songs, you'll be able to see it's just switching from another key to another, and they're not doing anything harder than a major Minor, minor, major, major, minor. Okay? Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So very good. Now, the, the deeper revelation of all of this is just because God has created music just, just beautifully, and he's actually made it to be his image, right? It's, God, it's just God and his image. That's it. He made us on which day? On the sixth day. He made us on the sixth day. Okay, so therefore, when you hear a minor chord, what is usually what is it usually saying about a minor chord? When you hear minor, it's associated with. No, when you hear a minor chord, what's the difference between a major chord and a minor chord? Which note? The third. The third. What happens to the third? It's lower. It's lower by how much? 
A half step, right? So it's a minor, okay? So we know that it's minor because it's half step lower. But that's how we identify it. We conclude, yeah, whenever you play a major, it's a semitone lower. But the truth of all of that, why it's that way? Because the piano is only designed with God and his image. How can I say that? God is the one. He's the one that sits on the throne, the one. Right? We are his image. So in music, you have a key signature of the one. Then they'll say, this key is the relative minor. So the relative minor of A, sorry. The relative minor of C is A. I knew you knew that anyhow. What is A in the key of C? Six. So that's why the six is minor. Yes, it has the minor third, but the true revelation is that it's an image of God and his image, us. We're created in his image. That's all the piano is. Where's another place that we have a major chord? What number? Well, for C, for key of C. Uh, yeah, key of C. F, which is number four. All right? So therefore, if this was the image, what's the image of this? What would be the relative minor of F? D. And what number is D? It's two. What type of chord is on D on the two? Minor. It's just God and his image. The piano is just designed as God and his image. That's why also it's also that. If you play the five, what type of chord is on the five? G. Major. It's G. Right? What's the relative minor of G? What type of chord is on E? Once again, the piano is only God image, God image, God image. That's it. That's why it's not hard, right? Do you see that? God image. And then we have the seven that's set apart, which is a diminished chord, right? Which we know it's by some. How do we use a diminished chord? How do we use a diminished chord? Yep, that's how we find it and we play it. How do we use it in a song?